Okay, my name is John Henry Chukudi. I'm a parent, uh, a father, a husband, I'm a researcher, I'm a librarian, I'm also a teacher. My life has been quite an interesting one, an adventurous one too, I'm full of testimony. I grew up in a domestic, um, uh, a domestic violent home where my dad usually engaged my mom in some physical um, abuse and physical abuse and all that, so which she left us. Uh, she quite, she, I think we, we're three. I have an elder brother, a younger brother too, so we're three. I could remember vividly um, when she left, she left us um, in the night when my daddy went to work at night because my dad is a DJ. He works in the nightclub in, in Lagos State, Nigeria. Um, so she left because of uh, a threat to her life and she left us and she left my younger brother when he was just six months old. And so basically we moved from there to my grandma's place where we stayed. So we were working, uh, we were actually there. Um, then my father um, died when I was just about to write my WIEC, that's my West African Exam Examination Council, which is the final examination you take before you leave uh, high school. So she, he died uh, of diabetes because he was of, of his lifestyle, he drinks. In the past life he had already lived, had already affected his health and all that. So that was how my um, disadvantages and uh, some of my challenges actually did start from the beginning because after he died, we, um, we our family members had to pick all of us. I was picked to Delta State in Nigeria, which is the um, south-south region of, of Nigeria. So I stayed with my aunt. Um, well, she engaged me with lots of... Um, um, house chores. That's where also I learned some um, some hand skills and um, went to complete my um, my examinations and all that. Then I left, then came back and stay with my elder brother here in Ogun State, Nigeria, which is the western part of Nigeria. My elder brother was in Lagos. All those why why I was in um, why I was in um, in in Delta State. He was here in Lagos and he was working. Then he came, he started working with the church school, then which is Seventh Adventist Church School in Lagos State. Then he moved to Bangkok University, which is in Ogun State, where he started working. So he came to pay me a visit while I was in Delta State, and he told me that um, there are opportunities for me to that I will be able to get because I had finished my wire. He hasn't gotten his work that if I come here and work, I will be able to earn good money and maybe further my education because I wasn't sure I was going to get that uh, higher education from where I was in Delta State because I wasn't sure because my aunt had a lot of responsibilities and other ones who will also go to the university. So I moved down to join him here in Ogun State, Bangkok University. I could remember vividly when I came down, we were just the two of us, orphans, no parents and all that. We were just managing with one of my pastor's wife. She put us, she took us in and we we're living with her here in Ogun State, which is within Babcock University community. So I, I needed to get a job. I was just walking on the round. My brother still works. So during some hours, I came around. I was moving around, going to every place I could get to. I was talking to them that I need a job. I go to, I was just trekking around, asking people around that I needed a job. I needed to work. So fortunate, fortunately enough, I was able to get a job. So I at one um, poetry where I was working, I began to build some experience over the over some few three months. Then my pastor's wife now started helping me to beg where she, at where she works that she needed that she helped me get a job in Babco because where I was wasn't really good enough. So I started then I was called to work with the grounds department, which is the environmental guys who clean the, the whole school surrounding, clear the grass and clean the, the gutters and all that. So I was working with them for some few times. Then I moved to cafeteria where I started working as um, in the kitchen. I then I used to then we turn fufu. I don't know if you know this cassava powders and all that where we turn. It's a very hard food, strong, quite that we eat here in Nigeria, basically from the west and the eastern part. So I was, you know, doing all that just night shifts only. 
So at some point after doing that, I crossed because of my diligent and hard work, I was able I was crossed to the laundry section. So the laundry section I crossed to was my breakthrough. Because I could remember I see students coming to bring in their clothes and I was dry cleaning their clothes for them. And some of sometimes they treat us less because they feel we are just dry cleaners, we wash their clothing and all that, take it to their hostel. So I decided then they, they urged to go to school to further my education set in. So I decided to start saving because I wanted to create a an impact for myself. So I started studying. I started so thank God for some friends. I was able to get an admission to study education at one of the prestigious uh, premier university of education in Nigeria, which is Taishola University of Education. So there I started my program in library and information science on a part-time study. So I was working and as I was still schooling concurrently. So as God will have it, I met some of my customers, uh, one of my preferred ones, which was Pastor Tunde Ojewole, now Professor Tunde Ojewole. He was a university pastor, he was one of my customers. So he told me, uh, he said something, he said, after my education, I should see him because he likes the way I do, I do his clothes. So he said I should see him after my, when so I finished my program, so which I did. Immediately I finished, I went to him, he was a university church pastor. And I said, Pastor, I'm done with my um with my college degree and i needed a job to move from the uh, as a washerman or as a london a london guy into an office work so he asked me where, where do i what is where is my passion but i said it so he took me to the hr and he brought me into the church so that was how i started working i left from being um a washerman to um to an IT person, a technical person, so where I was able to work for some time. Then I finished that, I um, crossed over to the... So as I was working, I needed to um, move over to the, to end a full-time employment. So that was where my challenge actually started because I wanted to get married and there was no funds at all. So, and I needed to cross to, um, to get the full-time employment, which I wasn't able to get. So I struggled, I struggled. I was able to get then I started my ma while I was waiting I started my master's degree program concurrently I got the degree then so, so then pastor also left so I had issues crossing to the full-time and uh, getting a full-time job because I was about to get married so I, I I just didn't stop there because I started conducting research I asked myself how will I make an impact for myself because I know the economy is hard this is not really setting in properly anymore. I said, let me just start working with my friends. So I started conducting some research. So then we write some little papers, then we publish those works. So that was one of my interests. So I started doing that gradually, gradually. I started getting my work published. Then I started getting recognition. Then when I was in bank, I was just earning, the church pays me 10,000. Um, the school pays me 10,000. Then I get 5,000 from Pioneer Church. For stipend, so it was twenty-five thousand era. Then I got the uh, the, the opposition open. Then I applied because I already had my master's, so I applied for the position in Lagos, which is one of the best secondary school in Nigeria. It's a British American school. I don't have anybody there, so I just put in my um, my CV there, and um, luckily for me, I was invited, and I got there. There were lots of people who had high skills, experience. Me, I don't even have any experience. I've never taught ever in the classroom or neither have I worked in the library before. So I got there and I was able to get, the, the, they interviewed me and I came out, uh, I, I did very well, then I was called to take the job. So they gave me the offer and I, I was blown away when I got the offer because the money was so, so, so very, very high. In fact, when I got my paycheck, I could not sleep that night. I was awake all through, I was just looking at my paycheck. So it was a lot of money. It was six figures and it was a very high six figures. For some, some of them, the money, when I make my inquiries, even those who, I, the job I was trying to get here, while I was still here to be crossed, I was not even going to get, it. I was only going to get 30% of the salary that I got over there in Lagos. So it's not about, you know, we as humans, we, we aspire within our own thinking. We are aiming something we see around, but we don't know that God has a higher um, plans for us. So I 
was able to get that um, opportunity because it was strictly God. So when I got that opportunity, I felt I was on the top of it already. I never knew that that was just the beginning for me, for my success. Few months after I got the job, my some of my works that I published, I got a call from Rwanda that they saw my work and they want me to come and present it in Rwanda. Can I come and be one of their guest speaker? And I was like, for Christ's sake, I'm just a common guy. I don't even... <laughs> I'm not even an academic so how do i you know put this through so i said okay i took the offer and i told my wife i said ah this is what i the offer i got to and i don't know how i'm going to do it because i don't even know how to do public speaking by the way and it's a foreign country so she said i should she believed in me she said i should try so i i i agreed so they paid all my trips funding everything and they even gave me some money i went there and my presentation was outstandingly okay so because of that, I started writing more, you know, I was passionate, I started writing, pushing my work out there and I was, I never relented, so I was working. Then all of a sudden, I also um, saw a, a program, a scholarship online. In fact, it was, it was not even a scholarship. I saw an advert that they needed a digital humanities researcher, somebody who can do research in digital humanities, which is rare books. It's a trend in, the, in Europe where they are trying to look at how the extinction of their cultures, especially writings, for example, like Chino Achebe's works and all that, that, um, you know, like we can't assess anymore and some other works. I'm just using the Nigerian factor to explain better. So I put it for the, for the position and I was given an admission and I was like, wow, how am I going to get, um, I, I say, well, admission has come. I have to go and look for money. We did the budget. It was like, um 5000 euro which is over 10 million or uh, 7 million thereabouts I, I was like how am i going to put these funds together then we prayed then I, I i just talked to myself i said god you've been the one from the onset right from the day one and the way my life has been going it's been a smooth success for me and i know you've started something and i know you're still going to finish it my highest challenge so far has been two major areas, which is academics, because no parent, no sponsorship. So all by myself and my brother. One of my biggest challenge, it was during my degree. Immediately I started my program. One year after I started my program, Bangkok University lead, did a mass restructuring. I think it was, it should be around 2010, 2011. They, they did mass retrenchment. No, not 2011, 2008, 2009. They did a general restructuring. I, I guess it was global made down. There was financial each, so we were laid off. And I already got in my first year, and my result was tremendously well. I was blown away because I don't know where to get the money from. I've been getting calls. I could not go to school, nothing. And I'd be like, what am I going to do? Then they paid my brother some amount, so they paid us off. So my brother gave me his own beat, and I ended with my own beat, and I was able to pay part of my school fees. So I had to leave the community and I went to Lagos to start working again, to gather some. So it was a very, very terrible. There was no place for me to stay. There was no place for me to lay my head. I was just juggling from one place to the other, from one cousin's place to the other. And that was how it was just so difficult for me. My result became so bad. I was not really, because I was coming from Lagos to my, to my school in Djibouti and I was doing that every weekend with the job and all that. So it was very very difficult for me then one day i got a call from um from um my pastor's wife that helped us to get the job informing me to come back that there is an opening for um for a job those who will be just to spill uh, yams and that's what you'll be doing in cafeteria just to peel yams and it's just two times in the year. so i said oh i'll be closer to school and that was how i took the job and i came back to to Bangkok community so that was my first tough experience I had. The second experience I had was during my master's program when I was asked to resign. And it was very tough for me because my, my supervisor, has, which is the HOD, has already told me that I was not going to graduate with a very good degree. So, and I wanted to do everything I could do because it wasn't really giving me attention anymore. Was, the program has been frustrating for me. I was, couldn't do anything. So that was at the point that I had to leave Bangkok University too because I was asked to go either to school or to to take the job because i was a contract staff 
so those are part, part of my hard time my hardest time and uh, also one of my hardest time too was when i lost my dad too because i can remember it was very very tough for us it was very very tough we we're not able to um uh, some of the things we could do we could not do them anymore um when i was with my aunt it was a very terrible experience too uh, i was looked down on several times i had to do all the house j jobs from waking up very early getting doing lots of jobs and sometimes when i do things i never they they never appreciate what i do they, they feel i don't do it very well i just get in fact i i was spoken down for everything i did i never got one good comment from them but i am also very grateful because staying with them refined me i felt i was very lazy but staying with them i was able to learn how to do things for myself how to cook how to do house chores even today me being married i do basically everything for my for my family i from the house chores to everything i clean everything because my wife works with works in the bank so it's been very very inspirational for me so i felt in fact it was very tough for me that i had to pack my things and i ran away from there they didn't know when i left i had to run and left them and i came back to join my brother so it's it was very difficult but i thank god that those challenges i had you know redefined me and made me not to take anything for granted so any opportunity I get, I see it as an opportunity God has given me to make an impact. So I hold on to it and I make sure that I make them remarkable. And it's so far so good. It's been, it's been helpful for me. So I'm grateful to God. So my journey started from just being a, a, uh, a, 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 a washerman for students to become an academics with a lot of experience. So by God's grace, I'm married with kids. I and I'm also, you know, registered in a lot of um, international organizations. So I just thank God for what He has done for me, and I pray that my little story inspires you out there. So don't give up on yourself. Just try and be the best you can. Always remember to direct your path towards God's path. Don't be the forerunner of your ideas. Table it to God and don't relent. Keep working. And I know God is going to minister to you and you're going to be rich the best. Thank you.